This is a tricky one from the GMAT prep software, but it's based on a very simple divisibility rule. If you're divisible by something, let's say three, and you add something not divisible, you're not divisible anymore. So for example, three and four yield seven. However, if you add two numbers that are divisible by three, you stay divisible by three. So these guys still divisible. If you add two numbers that are not divisible by three, you don't know where you end up. It depends on the numbers. So four and five do add to something divisible by three, whereas four and six do not. So we're told that h of n is the product of numbers from two to whatever n is. So that should make you think factorial. But there's a wrinkle, we're only talking about the even integers. So let's say it were h of 10, we'd be talking about these numbers. We've got h of 100, so things get extended quite a bit. We've got the same beginning, but we've got a whole bunch of numbers in the middle, and then let's just do a few from the end. And I would focus on the fringes, focus on the edges when you've got a big set, just so you can get a sense for what's going on. It usually helps focus things by starting at the bottom and then skipping the middle and seeing what happens at the end. And then usually you'll be able to infer some things about the set. In this case, you can start seeing that you have the positive multiples of two, right? Two, four, six, eight, right? It's two times one, two times two, and so on. With the last one being two times 50. So you should see now that your h of 100, which is 100 factorial but missing every other number, will actually have the consecutive uh, integers from 1 to 50 as factors. So now let's combine this idea with this divisibility rule. So now we're taking h of 100 and adding 1 to it h of 100 is divisible by all of these numbers from 1 to 50. 1 isn't divisible by any of these numbers except 1. So let's say we're thinking about 2. h of 100 is definitely divisible by 2. 1 is not divisible by 2. So that means that h of 100 plus 1 is definitely not divisible by 2. And you can keep going with this, right? Divisible by three, h of 100 definitely is. One, of course, isn't. And that's gonna be true for all of these, one up to 50. None of these are gonna be factors of h of 100 plus one, meaning that if h of 100 plus one doesn't have any factors from one to 50, it can't possibly have a prime factor between one and 50, so its smallest prime factor must be greater than 50, which means the only possible answer here is E. The other way to do this is to work from the answers, and I'd be thinking about the primes that are within the range uh, provided by each answer choice. And you can just take a second to think about what these are. Let's not forget two, the only even prime and the smallest one. I would make yourself familiar with these. Not that you have to memorize them, but I think primes up to 31 or 37 shouldn't be foreign to you. And I don't think that it's too much work to write out a list like this. So let's think about our h of 100 again. And let's think about whether these primes 
are factors of this. We know that our H100 is just those uh, positive, even integers from 2 to 100. So we can just list out a bunch of them. And then we know we go all the way up to 100. And you can see right away that 2 is in there. So 2 is definitely a factor of H of 100, as is 3, because there's a 3 in this 6. You can see that there's also a 5, because it's there. 7 is also going to be there, right? Because 14 is going to be somewhere in here. And by that same logic, 11 is going to be in there because we know that 22 is somewhere between 14 and 100, and it's an even number, so it's, it's definitely a part of our H of 100. And, of course, we're going to have 13 because 26 fits in that region. So does 34 for 17. So does thir uh, 38 for 19. These numbers are definitely between 22 and 100. For C, 46 and uh, 58 are absolutely going to fit in this range down here. And 62 and 74 will as well. So we know that all of these primes are factors of H of 100. But we're adding 1 to that. And so again, we can use this divisibility rule, that if you're divisible by something, so we know that h of 100 is divisible by all of these things, so that would be like, it's definitely divisible by something. And you add something that's not divisible by those things, and 1 is most certainly not divisible by any of these primes. 1 is only divisible by itself. It's not divisible by any of these guys. So that means that we're adding something that's divisible by all these things, something that's not divisible by all these things, so we end up not divisible by any of them, meaning that the biggest possible prime must be greater than 40.